Yeah, that's a nice crack here. Look at this crack on my windshield. My goodness. And I'm going to have to replace that. What happened was my daughter broke the window. It was an accident. Really? really? It was an accident. Okay. <laughs> now that we've established that, that it was an accident, I'm going to have to shell out money to fix this. This is a nice crack. And if we're talking about any kind of stimulus, they're always emphasizing consumption. Money is going out the door and going to somebody else. This is partly the broken window fallacy of Frederick Bastide, 1851. He believed that any consumption, or this is a belief, he personally didn't believe it, goes towards the glass man. The glass man then spends it at the restaurant. The restaurant sp uh, spends it on paying their employees. And this money multiplies through the economy. But this is a fallacy. It's a fallacy called the broken window fallacy. As you can see, this is not going to anything productive. You can come on over here, my fair hair assistant, and I can show you the equation. You have to lift this. Okay. We're going to write this out. Y equals C plus I plus G. So the government believes when C is down, the government has to stimulate the economy with fiscal policy and increase G. But what really happens is when C is down, typically savings and investment go up. And that's a positive thing. But if the government comes in and distorts the equation, the economy, it creates inefficiencies. I feel pretty good about writing on this car right now. There's this guy, the uneducated economist. He does this whole economic dialogue in his car. I decided I can one up him and do it above my car or on my car. I have no fear because this glass is being replaced. I believe this is a permanent marker. Anyway, the idea here is government throwing money into the consumption component through a fiscal stimulus it's believed to stimulate Y. But the fallacy here is, first of all, it's not the most efficient stimulus because with this money, instead of the broken window, I could have invested in tools for my business. You know, I have a, a backyard urban hipster farmer market garden and I could have increased production. So if people aren't consuming, they're saving. It doesn't leak out of the system, it's a fallacy. And when you're saving, you're investing and you're doing wise things, long-term planning, economic entrepreneurial calculations. But if the government is always focused on C through fiscal stimulus, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> you know, building bridges, hurricane relief, wars. You know, some of these like hurricane relief arguably has some social net social benefit because it's an unforeseen disaster. But most things that the government does through fiscal stimulus, it's the inefficient use of resources. So the broken window fallacy illustrates that because of this crack in the window, my money is now being spent on stimulating consumption rather than increasing investment in my own business. And I think that's a very important understanding if somebody's unemployed, maybe there's a reason they're unemployed. Maybe they're a blogger about the 2008 financial crisis and he was unemployed after that. And then maybe he should be unemployed and the government should not try to stimulate or perpetuate. Maybe his skills are better used somewhere else as the economy shifts. Because the economy is a very dynamic e e uh, mechanism that always focuses on equilibrium. So fiscal stimulus doesn't work in the long term because it allocates resources towards consumption and consumption doesn't put money in my long term pocket in terms of investment and savings. It's not necessarily a good policy. Now there's econometric models that will show either way, but in the long term, the healthiest economy is let the markets work. Thank you very much. Okay.